Hey everybody, welcome back to Warband as we continue year two, year two of the fight to save the world from the darkness. Okay, so it's my turn and like before, first thing I gotta do is I have to choose something to level up in. Now I could continue to improve my ability to train, but I think I'm actually going to improve my ability to fight. And what that means is I have to pay less resources than other players to initiate a battle. Okay, so... And I'm doing that because I think I, I want to start my own battle. Jen got one, you know, and, and so I don't know how many, you know, she has, she's got some points over here. She's got some intel. It stays face down, but I'm just going to keep it face up to remind myself. Actually, I guess I'm going to go face down. It doesn't really matter. And I want to have a fight as well. Um, but I can't start the fight right away because if you, if you check everything out, I need to have, because of this new card, three cavalry plus two. I need to have five cavalry in total, or, or infantry, infantry, and two cavalry. Now, I've got the two cavalry, but I need five infantry. Although, really, I only need four because I just leveled up my fighting ability. I'll talk to Bar in a second. So, but we need more infantry. So, I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do another double whammo, whammo trainer, and so I'm going to train two more guys and put them in the infantry. And now, you'll notice I've got more guys than the mercenary, so mercenary captain is out, Yellow Captain is in. I am now the King of the Swingers. Oh, the jungle VIP. I've reached the top and have to stop, and that's what's been bothering me. Sorry, that has absolutely nothing to do with Warband. I don't know why I'm quoting Disney's Jungle Book. Okay, I want to be a man, man cub. Uh, all right. <laughs> okay, that is out of my head now. Let's move on. So, I just did some training. So now there are definitely enough, uh, there's, there's enough infantry around to be able to start the fight. But here's the problem. Now that I am the captain, if, um, if I start a fight that has infantry losses, I'm the one who has to realize those losses. And I don't want to realize any losses right now. So before I start the fight, I'm going to do another training action. And I'm going to pay two bucks. And these two guys I just you know trained as infantry, I'm going to bump them up to heavy infantry. And what that means is now I've got a captain heavy infantry, but now the mercenaries go back to being the king of the light infantry, or the captain of the light infantry. So now I won't necessarily have to uh, suffer losses. Instead, the mercenaries will be the one who bear the brunt if I do a fight that um, causes infantry to get lost. And that's what I'm probably going to do because I'm planning on this one. Although it's interesting. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Okay, well, hold on a second. So anyway, those are my first two actions. We're training and then training. And now I am going, my third and final action, I'm going to start a war. First, I've got to check the warband strength. There's a total of five infantry, which is what we need. There's a total of two cavalry. We don't need any archers. Sorry, honey, don't need archers. And so that's cool. Now i got to pay wages. And um, you can see there's one, two, three, four captains. Now, I don't have to pay my own captain, so he's fine. But I got three more captains here. But because I've upgraded my fighting ability, I only have to pay, I have to pay one less. So you can bet with my last two bucks, I'm gonna pay this captain and this captain and not pay Jen. So that money she gave to me, I am not returning the favor. She did not get paid for me to start this fight because I got to pick one I didn't pay. All right, now I get to defeat an enemy. And here's the interesting thing. I was thinking I was just gonna do this one because hey, I'll score a buck off of this, you know, the spoils of war. Um, and I'll get two victory points. And, you know, the, the casualty, there, you know, there's no, um, what do you call them? The reservists. There's no reservists, so I won't have to lose any of my reservists. And, or they won't have to go to the medic tent where I have to pay to, to heal them. And the captain will get wiped out. You know, the mercenaries will get wiped out, so I'll take over the infantry. That was my plan. But I forgot. If I fight over here, the casualties are in archers. And because there's two archers that are supposed to die, Jen will lose one archer and therefore she will lose. So the money she paid on this, she'll be off the board entirely. And since there's no more archers, we go to heavy archers. There's no heavy archers, we go to honor guard. There's no honor guard, no more losses. So Jen would be the only one to suffer any significant troop losses. And Jen doesn't have any scouts over here so they wouldn't be able to protect her. So I could choose this one. And it would definitely hurt Jen, but it would hurt me too because I would end up um, losing one guy to the medic tent because you can see right there, it says one guy lost. So, do I want to hurt myself to hurt Jen? Jen paid one guy to, tra to train this guy. No, I think I'm just going to stick with my original plan. I'm going to choose this one because I get a buck, yay! And I win this fight, which is worth two points. Now, after that we get intel, so I get to draw some intel. Let's see what I get. I get... A Shinaru and an Elvethera, Elvethera, Elvethera. 
And so I got to choose in secret which one of these do I keep. Oops, sorry folks. Which one of these do I keep? Now Jen's already in Shinaru. Do I want to get some Shinaru intel, which means over the course of the game, I'm going to want to try and get scouts in Shinaru, because the more scouts I get in there, the more points this card is worth. But then Jen and I get into a scout war, and Jen is definitely better at scouting than me, and she's better at making money than me too. Alternatively, I could say, ah, oh, what the heck, I'll leave it, and I'll just worry about trying to get a majority in here. Because it's the interesting thing, at the end of the game, whoever has the most scouts here scores three points. Whoever comes in second scores, I think it's one point. Uh, it's one point for any of them in second place. Um, but then you score additional points based on the intel. So you're having to make these decisions all through the game um, that affect both this set collection game and this area majority game with the scouts and the intel. Oh, which one do I want? If I could have just drawn a colder, I would have been happy because I already have a scout over here. I would have been happy for that. But now I've got a tough choice to make. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it to Jen. She doesn't know it, but I think I am going to try to compete with her in Shandaru. So I'm going to take this secret intelligence. Now, send uses, uh, units to medics. There are no reservists have to go to the medics because it was a little battle. But now we have to assign casualties. Two infantry take casualties. And we always start, you know, we don't have to worry about casualties in the heavy infantry until the light infantry is done. And as it happens, the captain of the cavalry has to give up his two. They led the charge. They got paid, then they led the charge, and so they died. And that's two more mercenaries off the board. And hey, what do you know? Boom! Ah, there's a new captain in town. And so I've got two captains on the board. Very, very nice. Okay, so now draw redress cards. Again, uh, mercenaries never draw redress cards, so we skip that part. Salute war heroes. There's nobody in the honor guard, so we skip that part. Raid and pillage. There will be some raiding and pillaging on these two spaces. And then a new enemy appears in the space I didn't fight. I fought here, so an enemy appears here. And, let's see, it's a level three. Needs archers and casualties. Oh, casualties in my infantry. I'm the only one with infantry, so that's kind of scary. If that one gets fought, I'm the one who could potentially lose. But again, I don't mind losing people as much as everybody else because my dragon folk gives me a special ability that I get more redress cards. Well, I, I get basically, normally when you lose somebody, you get to draw one redress card. The dragon gets to draw two and keep one. So that's very, very powerful considering how good these cards are. But anyway, so, um, a new enemy's come out, and now it is Jen's turn. First of all, she's got to choose what she want to level up. She could become even better at taxing, start making five bucks to start pay for all those scouts she wants. But you know what? I think she's going to become better at fighting, too. I think so. Because she, want, she wants to get into at least one more fight so she can get a little bit more intel before she starts deciding where she really wants to spend her scouts with her scouting ability. So, she's going to plan to do a fight this round as well. And so, she has upgraded her fighting ability, just like I did. Okay, so now, first of all, can she do a fight? We need three archers, and there's only one, two infantry, and there's two, and three, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, there's three infantry and two cavalry. That's fine, but we are short two archers. We need two more archers. But here's the problem, or no, I mean, here's the solution. Jen, because she's better at fighting, she can um, supplement, she, she, she can be short one unit. So really, we only need one more archer. So I think Jen's first action is, she's going to train, and she'll get an archer. And now, there are enough units on the board. Even though she is short one, she can go ahead anyway and start a fight. So what's her second action going to be? She could start the fight now, and then, um, oh, but she has no money. She needs some money to start a fight, because she's going to have to pay. Wait a minute, didn't she have some money? What happened? Jen had some money at the end of the first round. So basically, um, just so you know, I, there was a screw up between filming. I had to reset the board. I think I didn't set Jen up right. Let me remember what happened in the first round. She started with three. She taxed. She had six. She had to pay. She paid me four. She had to pay two to me. So she had four. So she should have four bucks. And um, sorry about that, folks. Just didn't reset up after I screwed up. Um, uh, anyway, okay. So she has four bucks. So she can pay, but she only has to pay one less. I think she's going to train again. Her second action is she is going to train. Because after my infantry gets wiped out, she could become the queen of infantry. Okay, so there we go. So her second action, she did two trainings. Now she's going to initiate a fight. And once again, she has to prove, and we are short one archer. We should have three, but we only have two. But that's okay, because she can get by with one less. Then she's got to pay the captains. There's four captains total. I think I gave her back the right amount of money. I think I did. Yep. 
Um, she had six. She paid me two. Yeah, yeah. No. No, she should be short one more because she paid me two and she paid one. Yeah, so she had three. Now, she has enough to pay. Actually, she has exactly enough. There's four captains out here and she's got to pay. Well, she doesn't have to pay herself. So she's only got to pay two of them. She'll pay one to the mercenary and one to me, leaving me one buck left over if I set everything back up right. Sorry if I didn't. Notes will be added as always. Okay, so we paid captains. Jen now gets to pick which fight does she want to win. And, um, well, it's a, it's a no-brainer. She's totally going to win at this fight because it will, hit, it will hit my infantry and wipe out my guys so that she will be able to take over infantry. Oh. Oh. Oh, yes, it will. It'll actually work out brilliantly. So Jen gets to pick one. She's going to pick this one. All right. And now, so I mean, she scores three points, but you'll notice this one has send her reservist. She has to send one reservist to the medical tent. But since Jen has a scout, scouts are so useful. They can protect you from step five and step six. And then they also count for area majorities at the end of the game. And then they are also a multiplier for intel. Scouts have four uses and we're gonna show one of those uses now. Jen would normally have to send one of her reservists to the medic, but because the fight is here, this scout gave advance warning to that reservist and he did not get injured. So we can skip that. If Jen had, you know, if this were a four, she'd have to have two um, sc scouts to protect them, but she had one scout to protect her one guy, so that was cool. You know, and th that's why this is reminding you, hey, if you have a scout, you don't have to worry about the uh, sending units to medics. Step six, assign casualties. Two casualties from the infantry. So let's come over here. There um, happen to be two infantry. Now, first of all, I, as the captain, I have to give one up, right? So boom, I just lost my guy. Okay, but hey, at least I'll get a redress card, so that'll be nice. But now, um, we have to give up two. So here's one Jen could give up, right? But Jen does not want to give up her cavalry, so she will pay this same scout to protect this guy. So Jen has to pay one buck, and this guy did not die. And so since he didn't die, we still have to pay two, so we move up here, and now I lose one of my heavy infantry that I paid, to, or I paid a buck to train. So that sucks. So the two losses have been absorbed, but Jen got to avoid it because she had a scout. The scout, a single scout can protect somebody, uh, reservists from going to the medics and can also protect one unit from getting, um, uh, you know, wiped out. So that scout did Jen good. All right, and so anyway, so Jen takes this and she scores this. That's gonna be three more points for her at the end of the game. Now, I lost units. I, in fact, lost two units. It doesn't matter how many units you lost, you only get one redress card. Uh, so I don't get two, but my special power is when I'm doing redress cards, I draw two and keep one. Everybody else just has to make do with what they got, but I get a choice. I could choose recall or disengage. Let's look at these. The recall, I can play at any time on any player's turn, return up to three of my units from a light platoon back to reserve. So what that means is if I'm about to lose units, um, you know, because somebody else has started a fight and I'm going to lose them, I could just return them to my reserve. Or if, um, yeah, up to three of your units from light platoons back to reserve. So that's nice. Disengage, move any one of your scouts um, into a war hero space. I think that's even better. Yeah, I, this one, I'm just going to discard it. Yeah, yeah, it gets discarded. Um, it's only the warband because it has to be secret what intel people took and what intel they turned up. But I think these just get discarded. So I'm going to take this. This is a secret card I have that I can use um, at any time during my turn in the future. Move any one of my scout units uh, into the war hero space. And what that means is I'll save this until almost the end of the game. At the end of the game, when um, you know, we're getting close to the end, and I could see that you know, I tried. I tried really hard to become the scout king of Shinaru, but as it turned out, Jen ended up getting more than me, you know, let's just say. At that point, I'll play disengage, and I'll move one of these guys out, because they're not really doing me that good anyway, and I'll move them over here to the war heroes, and I'll score two points. And the war heroes are also give you an opportunity to turn money, excess money, into points at the end of the game as well. So that'll be a really handy thing for me to have in my, up my sleeve at the end of the game. Now it's interesting also, if, I ever, if near the end of the game I decide, you know what, I don't need to use this power anytime I want, I could use any card, any redress card to get a buck or to do a training action for free. 
So this is, there's three actions I could use this card for, and any one of them, depending on the timing, could be a real lifesaver. And you know, I mean, basically I lost this guy who had cost me a buck. For all intents and purposes, I got this buck back. I could always get the buck back with this redress, or I could use a much more powerful ability when I need it, when the chips are down. All right, so Jen started that fight. I drew a redress card. There's still no war heroes. Now we raid and pillage. Wow, there are now three bucks on this one. That's definitely a fight somebody wants to win. Um, although, unfortunately, neither of us have any scouts. Uh, but anyway, um, raid and pillage, draw a new enemy, and it goes over here, and it is a level two, so it's an easy, safe one, which really kind of sucks, because that means my scout is no good. He doesn't really help me. Oh, and this scene, this one wipes out cavalry. Now we need to have four cavalry on the board, and we only have two, so somebody's gonna have to train up some cavalry. If nobody trains up cavalry, we won't be able to fight at all in the future. All right, so anyway, so that was Jen's reactions. She trained and trained. Oh, and by the way, when I got wiped out, Jen became the captain. Now Jen's got two captains, and I've only got one. And now it is my turn on the third of eight rounds, and I have to choose what am I gonna level up. Oh, let's see here. Now, I know at some point I'm going to want to start putting scouts. And here's the tricky thing about scouts. You want to wait as long as possible putting your scouts in because, you know, at the end of the game, whoever has the majority in all these areas wins. So you don't want to tip your hand about where you're trying to get majorities. And you don't know what intel your cards are going to get. You want to wait until you have a bunch of intel cards, and then you have a better idea of where to put your scouts. But here's the problem. If you wait until the last two rounds to put out scouts, they get significantly more expensive to deploy. So, on the flip side, you want to get them out early, not only because you'll avoid this ex expense, but they'll protect you in fights so you lose less troops. So do I want to, let's see, I've got two bucks to my name. Scouts, a, a single scout costs five. Do I want to upgrade, do I just want to become better at fighting? Do I want to become better at training and get more guys here on the board? I could, I, a single training action, I could get three guys on the board. Or I could like avoid having to pay two captains. Hey, Jen's got two captains. I could avoid paying both of her captains to start a fight. I'd only have to pay the uh, mercenary who's left. So that's interesting. I could do that. I wouldn't have to pay Jen. I could train up two guys to be cavalry. And then, uh, yeah, we would have enough resources, more than enough resources, for me to start a fight. And if I start a fight, oh, look at this. I could make a lot of money. I think that's what I want to do. So I'm just going to become even better at fighting. And then on my turn, I'm going to train. Remember, a single training action, I get to put two. So now we have enough cavalry because we needed four cavalry total. And um, what else am I going to do? I think I am going to just get some, I'm going to tax. I need some more money. So I'm going to tax. And then I'm going to start a fight. Right. So. We need four cavalry, we need three archers. We only have two archers, but I can avoid two costs. So I have more than enough troops in the war band to start the fight. So that's cool. Let's pay the captain's wages. I get to avoid paying two, so I won't pay myself. Uh, the two I won't pay are Jen, so I only have to pay one to the mercenary. Now um, we do the fight. I'm gonna win this fight over here because I just made three buccarinos. This was a little fight, so I don't have to worry about any of my reservists going to the medics, but two, count them, two casualties from the uh, cavalry. So when you know, poor, all the mercenaries are out of the game and they're not coming back. And now I've got two captains, Jen's got two captains. Um, let's see, now I, uh, no redress cards are drawn. So the war heroes, that didn't happen. Raid and pillage, so these are my secret points I've got at the end of the game. More money comes out here and here. And then a new enemy comes out here. And um, that's it. So that was my turn. I trained, trained. Oh, wait, no. Yeah, I trained, taxed, and did that. And now it's Jen's turn again. So you see, um, the, the fights, they can go, turns can go really fast. Even though there's 10 steps to a fight, the fights, once you understand them, they're very, very quick. And now it's Jen's turn. What is she going to do? What's the new card that came out? It's a, oh, wow. Let's see. Does she want to get some scouts out so that if she starts this fight, she won't have to lose reservists? I think it might be time for her, although she's completely broke, totally busted, which means she doesn't have enough money to actually start a fight unless she taxes because she's got to pay my captains. If she levels up, she doesn't have to pay any captains because I've got two and she's got two. Or she could uh, start taxing five so she has enough money to start getting scouts out, particularly because she gets scouts out at a discount. Or she could fix it so she can get two scouts out per turn instead of per action instead of one. 
lots of options. But you know what? I think you've seen a little bit of everything at this point. Um, you've seen redress cards come out. You've seen um, you know war heroes get nominated. But the only thing you haven't seen is the end of the game. But it's pretty straightforward. At the end of the game, um, actually, it's kind of nice. The rule book has an Agricola. You know, the game is actually going to come with an Agricola style score sheet. So you score up all the points for battles you initiated in one. Um, every war hero you have is worth two points. The captains you have, they're still on the board. So there's an area majority going on on this board as well as you try to have more captains at the end of the game because everyone is worth a point. Converted gold. And now, to convert gold for every, what is it? I think it's every three gold. Is that right? Converting gold. Uh, three, for every three, for every three gold you have, you can convert it to one victory point for every scout or war hero. So if I have three war heroes at the end of the game and two scouts, that is, um, what? That's 15 points that I could convert into, or 15 excess money that I could convert into five points. He would convert three to one, three to one, three to one, three to one, three to one. So you could definitely go for a heavy tax money, convert that money into goods, if you supplement it with war heroes or spies. And then you also um, get, you know, and so then you do the scout control. There's a lot of points to be had here, depending on how many regions you have majority in. Then you get intel, you multiply your scouts, time your intel, that can be a huge turnaround. Then you lose points for everybody who went to the medic tent that you never healed, and you get your final score. So there, it's very cool, lots of different things you can focus on. Money, um, scouts, area control, captain control, just getting uh, uh, fights. But really, it's a combination of all three. But, oops, gotta put my, uh, you know, guys don't need to see a shipping box. But that, folks, is Warband. And if you'd like to hear some final thoughts, you can hit the button or follow the show notes now in five, four, three, two, one.